Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Brunel Business School webinar. Today we have with us Dr. Jill Collis, and she will be talking to us about the latest um, in our MSc programs on accounting and business management. Uh, welcome, Jill. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Joanna Oman, and I am the Marketing and Admissions Manager for the Business School, and I will talk to Jill today about the latest program and take you through some of the features of that program in the next half an hour. Um, so Jill, um, just to take our listeners through uh, the university and the school, I'll, I'll um, mention a couple of uh, points about the university where this program takes place. Um, basically, as you can see on the screens, um, the latest program is uh, based in Brunel University campus on the west side of London. And what you see on your screen now is a very nice area of all the buildings of the university. And the um, university is uh, based on a self-contained uh, campus with all the facilities that students may need. So there's halls of residence, sports facilities, restaurants, bars, um, doctor surgery, shops, and uh, a very, very beautiful business school indeed. Um, I'm just showing you here a screenshot of the business school um, that you can see here. It's the, the latest building, the latest addition to the campus, and a very modern building, a very nice place to, to work, and this is where we are recording this uh, webinar today. So moving on to the program itself, we'll start with a, a couple of questions to you, Jill. Um, you are the course director of this program. Can you tell us a little bit about what does this role involve? Well, primarily the, the role involved designing the course in the first place. So I've had an opportunity to shape what the students are going to be studying. Um, as an academic, it means that I'm responsible for all the academic side of this program. So it means I can answer any questions about the design of the program, the modules that you'll be studying, the teaching methods that the professors and lecturers will be using, and how your learning is going to be assessed. Mm -hmm. And you will also be teaching on this program, won't you? I will indeed. Okay, fantastic. So, um, when you were designing this program, who did you have in mind? Well, I've designed the program thinking about the needs of typical master students. And here at Brunel, we're very proud to attract both students from at home and from overseas. And over the years, I've observed that students require different things from master's level education. Mm -hmm. They're all interested in trying to enhance their career prospects. So they have that in common. And some of them are thinking that perhaps their career will take them into the accountancy field. So mm -hmm. we've designed this program for students who might be wanting to um, provide um, a future that will give them some exemptions from the professional accountancy exams. However, those are not the only students I had in mind. I also had in mind students who were thinking of working as managers in business when they mm -hmm. finished their degree. <clears throat> and it's a pretty competitive job market out there at the moment yeah, in exactly. most countries. Um, and I thought about their needs. They need to show that they're slightly different from the students who have only just finished their bachelor's degree. Um, and I want to add extra skills to students entering that job market. Mm -hmm. And then there's another group of students who might want to come do a master's degree. And those are the students who are planning to return to a family business when they've finished their studies. And they want to bring additional skills and knowledge back to invest into the family business. Now another group of students are those who perhaps would like to find employment in the job market or those who fail to find employment in the job market and are inspired because they have an entrepreneurial streak and they either are planning to or they end up starting their own business. So I want something in the program that's going to appeal to them. And finally, there are the students who fall in love with learning and want to go on learning 
for a very long time. So they might be using the master's degree as a stepping stone to studying for a PhD later. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much for that. And um, a question leading from this that we often get asked by um, our um, prospective students, how does this program relate to finance? Finance and accounting, it's often considered to be one and the same thing by students who have not done this before. Would you be able to give us a little bit of guidance of how students should think about the distinction between those two? Yes. Well, accounting and finance are really two different things. If you want to think about finance, that's the activities that the bankers and those who are working um, in, in the stock markets are concerned with. Um, here we're thinking about accounting. Accounting is at the heart of all business. Whatever kind of organization, it's likely to need accounting information. And accountants provide that service. They provide the information to the managers. Um, now, the managers also have a responsibility in many organizations to provide financial information to people outside the business. Hmm. So accountants provide information for those inside the business, for managing the business, and for those outside the business that are uh, stakeholders in that business. So perhaps it could be external owners of the business, who we would call shareholders, or it could be uh, customers or suppliers, or even lenders to the business and they need financial information which would be supplied by accountants. Hmm. Uh, somebody recently described, I believe it was the MBA uh, program director actually, that accounting or an accountant is somebody who has their hand on the heart of the business and measures the pulse constantly. Would you agree with that? This is true. This is true. Of course, management um, also needs to have their hand on the heart of the business as well. So accountants work closely with management to make sure that management um, are provided with timely information and useful information that's going to help them to make their decisions. Mm -hmm. and in larger businesses, you will have somebody called a finance director who will have a strong background in accountancy. Okay, fantastic. So, the people who do decide to pursue this career pathway, accounting, what um, can they expect to take out of this program, the learning outcomes of this program for them? What's going to be important for them is to realize that um, whichever professional body's exams they decide they're going to take, which will lead them to membership of that accountancy body, um, accountants don't just need to know about technical accounting. They don't just need to pass the exams for the accountancy profession. They also need to bring with them people skills because their clients are people. It's people who run businesses. So they need to be able to understand something about business itself, particularly in modern society. Um, and they also need to understand something about the needs of the business owners. So it's not just a technical subject. Hmm. Okay, and not, definitely not a boring one, as, as some people may think about accountancy. I know you are uh, very active in accounting, accounting research. This is an area that you're very passionate about yourself, right? Indeed. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Well, the, the program structure is explained in detail on our website, so we'll try not to go too much into it, and we encourage our listeners to, to visit the website and, and discover the modules on this program. Um, we do also ask you to post your questions uh, to Dr. Collis as you're listening to this um, webinar, and we will read them out and make sure that um, they are answered fairly quickly. Um, Jill, the next question that I have is, what kind of learning activities would students expect at this level on that program? Well, um, I think you should be prepared to, uh, to study very hard at master's level. Mm. I think you, you need to realize that it's not going to be quite as easy as it was at bachelor's level. And even at bachelor's level, it's challenging. Um, having said that, you're going to be introduced to some new subjects. We're not expecting you to know anything about the subjects that you're learning. So we will be starting from scratch. I, I, think, I think that's very important, that actually people who don't necessarily have the background in accountancy can also join this program. Yes, and of course the program is not just about accounting. 
Uh, we've got management subjects as well, so you'll be learning about business and management at the same time because it doesn't make sense to separate them, what I was saying earlier about accounting lying at the heart of any business. So we make these close connections. So you don't need to have knowledge of accounting and you don't need to have prior knowledge of business or management. We will assume that everybody is starting from a level playing field. Okay. If it just so happens that you have some knowledge, that's wonderful, you'll be able to contribute more to the class discussions. Mm -hmm. So, um, you will find that if you come on the program, you will have some accounting modules and some business and management modules, and one of the important modules will be the research methods training that you will take, which will prepare you for your dissertation. So if we just think about the talk modules on accounting and business management first of all, what you can expect is a series of lectures, sometimes with seminars as well, and it depends on how the module leader wants to deliver the materials to you. So you may have um, something that's called a lecture, that's where the whole group is being taught at the same time, or you may have something which we call a seminar, that's where only part of the group is going to be there, so it's slightly smaller. But whether it's a lecture, or it's called a seminar, or perhaps it's called a workshop even, um, in most cases you can expect your module leader to um, ask you to prepare for the class. So you may have to study some specified reading materials, so you'll be told what to read. Um, you may be asked to do some kind of exercise or, or, or another activity, um, and you will do this to help you make the most of the class session that you're going to. And then when you get to the class, it'll be similar to your other experiences, I'm sure. You'll be expected to take notes. You'll be expected to participate in any of the activities that are happening. And you'll be given plenty of opportunities to ask questions. It will be interactive. Many of the professors and lecturers here are very keen on making this an active occasion when they see the students in the class, not just a dry lecture where you're just listening. So lecturers would bring case studies to the classroom, would talk about situations that happened in real businesses and teach students to experience certain concepts through the experience of those businesses. Yes, and we believe in learning by doing. So um, uh, in the accounting subject, we'll be encouraging you to take little steps when you, when you learn about techniques, take little steps during the classes and then perhaps do some longer exercise as your homework. <laughs> um, and then in the other subjects, you may find yourself being invited to form small groups and do some kind of a group activity uh, to, uh, to debate something. So perhaps you've been asked to read something in advance and then you're going to debate it in the class. So you'll find a whole range of different teaching and learning techniques being adopted according to the material that the professor or lecturer is trying to help you get to grips with. And if I may add to this, I would like to bring here also information about the extracurricular activities that students will be taking part in under the umbrella of our Business Life Employability Program. And that's something that will run simultaneously or alongside their classes, but will provide that applied training that on the job or learning by doing aspects that you mentioned a moment ago, because we have workshops that will be very relevant to accountants, which would be Sage accounting software, so actually learning how to use that package, which in the real world, if you and I were to go out now and do that, would be quite expensive. So I know that Business Life provides the workshops that are for free and available to all students to participate in. Um, they would learn also things about using Excel very proficiently for management purposes, for reporting and analysis purposes. There are workshops about negotiation skills. Uh, so the, there will be a number of these workshops. We're looking at dozens of workshops throughout the academic year that are very much designed to help students get that professional training alongside the academic training that uh, lecturers like yourselves will be providing for these um, students in the classroom. 
And so I think that's 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 worth mentioning as well. Um, so if students do all these learning activities, take part in the lectures, work in groups, uh, prepare presentations, how would they be assessed? Uh, students are often scared of exams, that's the nightmare of everyone. So what type of assessment is there on this program? There's a whole range of assessment. So some of the modules will be assessed as 100% coursework. Some of them will be assessed as 100% examination. Um, I would add that those tend to be the accounting modules where we give 100% examination because it's rather hard to create scenarios where you are being, um, your learning is being assessed on some of the technical skills. Um, other modules might be a combination, partly coursework and partly examination. So uh, you will be given all this information in advance when you start, so you'll know what to expect. Okay, and um, let's talk a little bit about how intensive the program is. So we mentioned that so far there seems to be a lot going on. You have lectures, workshops, and the business life activities. But focusing on lectures or, or study time alone, would you be able to to, uh, to put a finger on a, a time frame that students need to dedicate to study per week, let's say. I suppose most of the students who are coming on this program will already have experienced a bachelor's degree. Um, so you, you will know what it's like to study over a three-year period. Um, what you're doing at master's level is you're mastering a number of subjects within a very short period of time. You've only got that one academic year to complete the work. So we do expect you to be working pretty hard. Having said that, you will have um, plenty of class time. If I can give you an illustration, most of the business and management modules um, will offer you um, 24 hours, approximately 24 hours of class time during the term. And for the accounting modules, we will offer you approximately 36 hours of class time for each term. So we're giving you extra time on the accounting modules because those are the sorts of um, um, uh, topics where students need more practice time under the guidance of a lecturer or a professor. Um, so we acknowledge that students need a little bit more help with that. Um, having said that, um, you will still find that your timetable is not so full that you don't have time for what I was referring to as the homework that you might be set, that you don't have time for revising for tests or exams or for doing your coursework. You will have um, a, a fair workload. But just to go back to what I said at the beginning, if you're mastering something, then you are moving up a level from bachelor's degree. So it's a question of making a, a, a concerted effort over a relatively short period of time and then reaping the rewards. Mm. And <laughs> excuse me, a lot of our students on other master's programs, because we need to refer to them as this is a new, uh, new program that we are offering, a lot of the students on the other master's programs do have the opportunity to gain a little bit of work experience alongside their studies as well, whether it's a, a day or two days a week where they take up a part-time role in their chosen career, in their chosen uh, interest area. Um, and we cannot really comment at this point whether that would be uh, something that students will do on our program, but certainly given that this the structure of this program is quite similar to other master's programs. We can assume to some extent that students would still have that freedom or that availability to do take up a day or two of working um, throughout the week in their chosen career. And we certainly hope that that would enrich a little bit of that experience that they have in class as well. Uh, international students who do come to this program are allowed to uh, to take up a little bit of work as part of their visa um, in, in rules um, and certainly the university has a wonderful placement and career service um, that is an award winning um, center for students to um, get advice about gaining additional uh, employment opportunities or work placement opportunities so certainly there's an opportunity for students to do that as well. 
Um, the, the crowning glory of the program is the final project, where I think students not necessarily go to lectures anymore, but they can truly devote their time to something that is of most interest to them and focus on study um, and research in an area that they later on perhaps want to work in. What kind of projects do you expect students to take up in the area of accounting? Well, there's plenty of choice. Um, perhaps I should start by saying that we prepare you for this dissertation that you're going to do. We prepare you very well. So you have a module which will teach you all the research methods that we expect you to make a choice from when you're designing your research. But when it comes to choosing the topic that you want to investigate, it is wide open. You can choose anything you like that is relevant to the degree. So anything in accounting, anything in business or management. Now, when I say accounting, um, for students who are planning a career in accountancy, they may very well develop an interest in some technical issue that is currently being debated. So they could, they could investigate that. Um, for those who are planning a career in business management, you know, hoping to find a job, then whether the, the job is actually um, for an employer or whether they're going back home to work in the family business, um, they may be interested in a topic that has financial implications for the business but isn't directly about accounting. Um, so that sort of deals with the accounting side. There's absolutely no reason why a student who's interested in the internationalization of business or the global diversity issues or business ethics issues or corporate governance issues shouldn't choose some of the burning issues of the day to investigate for their dissertation. And thinking about the group who might have an entrepreneurial streak, if you're thinking of starting your own business, Maybe the sorts of topics that will interest you would be things such as um, looking into the problem of how a startup business gains access to finance. It's very difficult during times of austerity to find enough money to start a business. So what are the issues and problems that businesses face um, that have been in that situation recently and how they resolve them? So you could investigate something that's going to be very relevant to your, your future career plans as well. Mm -hmm. And if you're planning to be a PhD student state afterwards, um, then perhaps whatever it is that you've chosen for your master's dissertation will whet your appetite for further study. And you can use that foundation of knowledge that you've gained from your master's dissertation to build an idea for a proposal or doctoral studies. There's certainly a lot of inspiration for this research from lecturers on the program themselves and, and this leads me nicely to the question about how much the research that we do in the school in accounting guides the curriculum on this program, it, you know, is translated into the what, what the lecturers say in classes, is, is transported into the classroom. Would you be able to comment on that please? Yes, indeed. Well, Brielle is a research-intensive university, so that means that your professors and your lecturers have been chosen, not just because they're good teachers, but because they're doing research in specific areas of their specialist subjects. And in many cases, the results of our research have got practical implications for business managers, so we're able to bring that into our teaching. Sometimes the results of our research are relevant to the accountancy profession, so we can bring that into our teaching if we're teachers of accounting. Sometimes they're relevant to changes that the government is making and changes that other regulators are making. So we can bring that also into our teaching. So don't be surprised if sometimes you are invited to read an article that's been published by your professor. Or a textbook, indeed. Of the textbook. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, having these um, high class researchers as your professors can be intimidating, but do students, are students able to approach their professors fairly easily? 
please consider that they would be coming from different cultures, or perhaps it's not, their lectures are not as approachable. Can you comment on how easy it is to work with the professors here, approach them? Yes, it's, it's very important to realize that, of course, we are professional people. So everybody you come in contact with at Brunel University, whether they're administrators or whether they're academics, are chosen because they are good at their profession. But they're also chosen because they're nice people. Um, and nice people tend to attract more nice people. <laughs> so I hope you will have um, a very friendly welcome when you join us. Now, having said that, how are you going to know whether the people are nice? Well, in your classes, when you start um, your, your first week, you'll be meeting the professors and lecturers and the administrators for the first time. And you will quickly learn that, yes, we can do our job, but also we are approachable people. We're, we're just normal human beings. And you're going to get a chance to, to get to know us through seeing us at the classes. Um, and you'll also be able to come and see us um, if you've got any queries in what we call our access hours. So these are hours that we set aside each week as academics to be available to our students if they've got queries, uh, perhaps about uh, some of the teaching and learning materials, or perhaps they've got a query about an assignment that they're trying to tackle, or, or anything that's, that's academic, we, we, we try to help them. That's, that's great, thank you very much, Del. What I'm displaying to our listeners now is the um, information about how to contact the school, the business school desk, for inquiries, or indeed yourself. Um, would you welcome, from a student who's interested in pursuing this program, to receive an email or a telephone call? Yes, that would be wonderful. I'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. So you can see the, um, the contact details for um, uh, Jill on the slides that we're showing you currently. Um, I think the fact that we're doing this webinar today is us really opening up the opportunities for students to hear from their professors, because that's whom they really want to listen to. And please feel free to approach us by email or telephone directly. You can also see the different social media channels where um, the business school staff and students um, raise the latest issues, news, events, stories, and you can post your questions on those channels for us as well. So um, thank you very much for all who attended the webinar and are listening to us online later on. Thank you, Jill, for coming today. My pleasure. I look forward to seeing some of our, our participants in real life. Thank you very much. Goodbye.